everyone, I'm Allie and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm showing you five modern industrial style decor DIYs plus offering a couple tips for achieving a Christmas look with this theme. So I have a lot to cover in this video, so let's get started with this first DIY. Starting with four of these Dollar Tree nutcrackers, and I'm going to make some modern stocking holders. First, I removed all of their hair and beards. It's not glued down, so it's very easy to remove. And to be honest, I felt really bad doing this. Next, I gave all of them a coat of primer and then let that dry for an hour. Then I gave all of the Nutcrackers two coats of Anvil Gray Chalky Finish Spray Paint. I made sure to rotate the Nutcrackers as I worked to get all of the plastic covered. While those were drying, I assembled the bases. I used some Dollar Tree Tumbling Tower Blocks and some Basswood. You'll need eight blocks for each base. To make a top for the bases, I measured and cut out four pieces of basswood to two and nine sixteenth inch squares. That's a super specific measurement, I know. Next, I used my Dollar Tree square to help me keep everything at a nice 90 degree angle when I assembled my tower blocks. Now, you could use wood glue for this, but I decided to use Gorilla Brand hot glue since that's the fastest, and I find it works very well with wood. I arranged the pieces to create a square with two blocks on each side like so. Then I glued the basswood piece on top, and once assembled, I lightly sanded the entire thing. After that, I stained all of the bases with Special Walnut Stain by Minwax. This is the perfect modern industrial color, and I let that stain dry for several hours before moving on. Next, I used a small drill bit and carefully drilled tiny pilot holes onto the front center of each base. So this is going to be a bit weird, but because these needed a little more weight, I just hot glued a couple Dollar Tree rocks into the opening left at the bottom. And after that, I cut two and a half inch squares out of Dollar Tree cork sheet and hot glued it to the bottom of each base. Next, I took these metal clips I got from Target, though I know Dollar Tree sells something very similar. And I just took some spare screws that I had in my stash and attached the clips to the bases. Finally, I used a combination of Gorilla Brand hot glue and E6000 glue to attach the nutcrackers to the bases. And this completes the set of stocking holders. first time here, this video is part of a six part series I'm doing this year for Christmas where I show you how to decorate for different decor styles. So far I've already done modern farmhouse, mid-century, and traditional decor and this is video number four. So let's talk a little bit about some of the motifs and themes that you'll see with a modern industrial Christmas. This style incorporates a lot of warm and moody elements. The style is of course based in old factories, so you get a lot of the brick, the metals, the concretes, things like that, and you want to bring those in with your Christmas decor. With this style, you'll see lots of clean and minimal shapes and designs. With this style, you'll find lots of metals like copper, stainless steel, wrought iron, and galvanized metal, along with some worn, rustic woods with dark color stains. To really complete this look, bring in some warm lighting with either candles or Edison-style bulbs or old reclaimed lighting. <laughs> 
since I made stocking holders, I decided I needed some industrial inspired stockings to hang from them. I'm using black canvas duck cloth for the stockings because this style incorporates a lot of utility fabrics. And I totally freehanded this stocking pattern, but I will link some free stocking pattern options below. I'm making two stockings, so I cut out a total of four pieces. I cut about half an inch away from the trace line to allow for seam allowance. To elevate these pieces of fabric, I used some white acrylic paint to paint on a mud cloth pattern. This just brings in a really nice modern touch so the stockings aren't so plain and it's just a lot of fun to do. I looked up inspiration on Pinterest, I just searched for mud cloth patterns. While the paint is drying, I cut out two cuffs from faux leather in this nice medium brown color. I traced the top of the stocking pattern onto the material, eyeballing how big I wanted to make the cuff. I folded the material in half and then cut out, allowing for seam allowance on the top and sides. Next, I sewed up the black stocking pieces with the painted right sides together, following that white line I made when I traced the pattern. Then I switched to a stronger needle and used a longer stitch to sew the side of the faux leather cuff. Next, I pinned the cuff so the leather side was facing down on the non-painted side of the stocking. I also took a small strip of the faux leather and pinned it so it was along the outer seam on the inside of the stocking like so. I then carefully sewed the cuff on. Finally, I turned the stocking right side out and folded the cuff over. I also ironed the stockings just so they'd be nice and flat. Next, I wanted to do a modern take on an advent wreath. I started by using an old cereal box to make a mold. That's because I'm going to be using concrete for the very first time ever for this DIY. I made a long rectangle with the box, making sure to secure the edges with tape. Now, quite honestly, making the mold out of just cardstock was kind of a dumb idea, so I suggest looking up how to make better concrete molds if you do choose to make this DIY, but I guess in my case, I learned by doing. Next, I scooped out some of the concrete mix into a bowl that I didn't care about. I then added water and just kind of played around between adding the mix and water until I got the consistency that I thought looked right. Then I just poured the concrete into the mold and it took two full bowls of concrete to fill the mold about halfway. Next, I'm using 3 4 inch copper pipe fittings. I let the concrete set up for about 45 minutes before placing the fittings lightly into the concrete. The setup time will be entirely dependent on your concrete mix and environment. Just wait until you can put the fittings into the concrete, but they don't want to sink to the bottom. I let the concrete dry overnight and I actually removed the mold off camera after a few hours of dry time. Then I used sandpaper to smooth down the rough edges. Then I cut a piece of felt that was slightly smaller than the base of the candle holder and hot glued it to the bottom to protect the surface that I set this on. Now to turn this from just a regular industrial looking candle holder to an advent wreath, I used numbers one through four from this Dollar Tree wood letter pack and I painted all of the numbers black. Now because the third candle on a traditional advent wreath is pink, I painted over the number three with a few coats of this bronze acrylic paint. Mm -hmm. 
after the paint dried, I wanted to make these numbers removable, so I formed some copper wire around the copper pipe, twisted it a few times, and then put hot glue on the number and attached the wire. Finally, all you have to do is add the candles and light your modern advent wreath as the season goes on. The modern industrial style definitely has a neutral color palette with blacks, whites, and grays along with just some natural colors. And it also brings in a lot of times some rich earthy tones. You'll find that in the browns, the greens, some deep beautiful burgundy colors really make this style come together. And some of the textures you want to bring in are different metals and woods like I had already mentioned, along with leather, utility fabrics, and you can also bring in some velvet to pull in that Christmas feel. Next up, I wanted to make a little set of cone trees. I started by using Dollar Tree poster board, tied a string around my pencil, and drew a semicircle from a 12 inch radius point. I then used my ruler to complete the shape and cut it out. I repeated this two more times, making the second one with a 10 inch radius and the third one with an 8 inch radius. Next, I rolled the poster board to make cone shapes. I used this Dollar Tree floral foam piece to help me make the cones a uniform shape. Now for the biggest and smallest cones, I glued the foam piece inside and I left the medium sized one empty. For the tallest cone, I took strips of the faux leather material from earlier and wrapped the pieces around the cone, starting from the top and working my way to the bottom. I used hot glue to attach them and I allowed the pieces to overlap the best that I could along the back. For the smallest cone, I used this wood textured scrapbook paper from Michaels and repeated the same steps to make the cone from the beginning of this DIY. And finally, for the medium sized cone, since I have already had the concrete out, I figured why not fill it with concrete and make a concrete tree. So I mixed up the concrete, filled the mold, and then I set it in an old water bottle so that it would be stable while it dried overnight. As far as Christmas trees go for this style, real trees are a great Fit. And I often find that because this style is pulled from the feeling of living in a loft or in an old factory, a very tall grand tree is just perfect for the style. But of course, if you live in a normal sized house or apartment, a normal sized tree suffices, but maybe go a little bit taller because these trees are very minimal. So you don't have to worry about a tree topper necessarily. So that tree could touch the ceiling if you wanted it to. And along those lines, not very many ornaments that go on these trees. They do keep, again, to a very minimal look, and they bring in some more of those metals, the wood and the leather, and then tie it all together with some warm white lights. Next, I wanna make a really cool set of ornaments in this industrial style. So first, I spray painted four ornaments with some primer. Once the primer dried, I gave two of the textured ornaments two coats of copper spray paint, and I just think it looks so awesome on these two ornaments. For the other two, I gave them a coat of the Anvil Gray Chalky Finish Spray Paint. After the paint dried, I am doing the same faux concrete look I just did in my testing faux pottery vase hacks video from a few weeks ago. I'll link to that video for the full tutorial on how to get this look, 
But basically, I took a medium gray paint and a coarse bristle brush to paint on some cross hatching. I also used a paper towel for blending and removing excess paint. up this video I really hope you enjoyed it these were some very different DIYs that I really went out of my comfort zone for and I absolutely love how they all turned out that advent wreath or candle holder I think is my absolute favorite that I've made this entire series don't forget to like this video and in the comments I want to know if you would ever try making concrete crafts or if you've done it before and if you have done it before I would appreciate any tips that you can give me in the comments. Thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!